Out of 36 Ottoman Sultan, few stands out to be remarkable due to their administration and conquest. Sultan Murad IV was a worthy contender to be in list of great Ottoman Sultans rivaling his predecessors Osman I, Mem the Conqueror, Bayezid II, Suleiman the Magnificent, and Abdul Hamid I. Murad IV was the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire from 1623 to 1640, known both for restoring the authority of the state and for the brutality of his methods. Murad IV was born in Istanbul, the son of Sultan Ahmed I and the ethnic Greek Kozum Sultan. Brought to power by a palace conspiracy in 1623, he succeeded his uncle Mustafa I. He was only 11 when he took the throne. His reign is most notable for the Ottomans' of favored war of which the outcome would permanently part the Caucasus between the two imperial powers for around two centuries, while it also roughly laid the foundation for the current Turkey-Iran-Iraq borders. In the early years of Murad's reign, he was under the influence of his relatives. His absolute rule started around 1632, when he took the authority and repressed all the tyrants, and he re-established the supremacy of Sultan. Murad was for a long time under the influence of his relatives, and during his early years as Sultan, his mother, Kozum Sultan, essentially ruled through him. The empire fell into anarchy. The Safavid Empire invaded Iraq almost immediately. Northern Anatolia erupted in revolts, and in 1631 the Genissaries stormed the palace and killed the Grand Vizier, among others. Murad feared suffering the fate of his elder brother, Osman II, and decided to assert his power. At the age of 16, in 1628, he had his brother-in-law and the former governor of Egypt, Kara Mustafa Pasha, executed for acclaimed action against the law of God. Murad tried to quell the corruption that had grown during the reigns of previous sultans and that had not been checked while his mother was ruling through proxy. Murad also banned alcohol, tobacco, and coffee in Istanbul. He ordered execution for breaking this ban. He would reportedly patrol the streets and the lowest taverns of Istanbul in civilian clothes at night, policing the enforcement of his command by casting off his disguise on the spot and beheading the offender with his own hands. Rivaling the exploits of Selim the Grim, he would sit in a kiosk by the water near his Seraglio Palace and shoot arrows at any boatman who rode too close to his imperial compound. The Safavid dynasty, established in 1499, had gained control of most of Iran by 1512. Two years later they were defeated at the Battle of Calderon by the Ottoman Turks and lost some of their territory. But by the end of the 16th century, a brilliant leader had emerged, Shah Abbas I. Coming to power in 1588, he raised a highly proficient army over the next 10 years and then felt able to take on the Ottoman Turks. He seized Tabriz and then, in 1623, just a few years before his death, captured the treasured city of Baghdad. But his triumph was short-lived. He died without an heir in 1629. He had murdered all his next of kin, and it was now left to the Ottomans to take the offensive under their new, able leader Murad IV. Baghdad, once the capital of Arab Abbasid Caliphate, was one of the most important cities of the medieval Muslim world. From 1508 till 1534, it was ruled by the emerging Safavid dynasty of Iran, between that time led by Shah Ismail I and Shah Tamas I respectively. In 1534, the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent captured the city without any serious combat during the Ottoman, Safavid War of 1532-55 which was confirmed in the resulting peace of Amaja. However, 90 years later it was recaptured by Abbas I of Persia. Attempts of several Ottoman commanders to retake the city following 1624 were fruitless. In 1638 Ottoman Sultan Murad IV decided to recapture the city. According to legend, only the Sultan in person could conquer the city. Murad was seen as a warrior hero and thus it seemed as his duty to campaign and regain Baghdad. He had been victorious against the Druze rebels a decade earlier and won a great victory at the Siege of Yerevan in 1635. According to the eyewitness account of Zerain Aga, the Ottoman mobilization for the siege of Baghdad was 108,589 men composed of 35,000 infantry in part genissaries and 73,589 cavalry. The distance between Istanbul and Baghdad is about 1,600 kilometer. 
The Ottoman army covered this distance in 197 days with 110 staging stations in between. The siege began on November 15, 1638. The Safavids had increased the garrison size of the city by around four to five times. Troops numbered 40,000 infantry and 100 cannons. There were four main gates of the city, the North Gate, Azamai or Imamai Azam, the South Gate, Karanlik, Ak and Copper Gates. The Ottoman observer Zayed and Ibrahim Nuri described the city's fortifications as follows. The city walls were 25 meters tall and between 10 and 7 meters wide, reinforced by earthen ramparts to withstand artillery bombardment and protected by a wide and deep moat. The city walls featured 114 towers between the north and south gate and another 94 towers that ran parallel to the Tigris. The Safavid commander, Bektash Khan Gorgi, had made extensive repairs to the fortifications. Two pashas were deployed against the first two gates. But the Grand Vizier Tayyar Mehmet Pasha noticed that these two gates were very well fortified. So he chose to attack on the third, Ak, gate which seemed less fortified. During the siege, the Safavids made sallies of around 6,000 men at a time. This was followed by a retreat into the city and a fresh 6,000 to attack. These types of attacks greatly increased the casualties of the Ottomans. The siege continued for 40 days. Towards the end, impatient Murad urged the Grand Vizier for a general attack. The attack was successful and the city was captured on December 25, 1638. But during the final clashes, the Grand Vizier was shot down. The recapture of Baghdad was the second conquest of the city by the Ottoman Empire now under Sultan Murad IV ending the conflict between Safavids and Ottoman and resulting in the Treaty of Zuhab in 1639. While he was encamped in Baghdad, Murad is known to have met ambassadors of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, Mir Zarif and Mir Baraka, who presented 1,000 pieces of finely embroidered cloth and even armor. Murad gave them the finest weapons, saddles and captains, and ordered his forces to accompany the Mughals to the port of Basra, where they set sail to Fatah and finally Surat. During the last years of his life, Murad became addicted to alcohol. It turned him into a homicidal maniac. Dimitri Kentemir of Moldavia wrote, Very often at midnight he stole out of the women's quarters through the private gate of the palace with his drawn sword and running through the streets barefooted with only a loose gown around him, like a madman, killed whoever came his way. He took particular pleasure in beheading men with fat necks. Murad practiced his powers with the arquebus from the palace walls on passers-by in case they were intending to look into the harem. While riding out, armed with his bow, he used to practice his aim on any passing woman. On February 9, 1640, this sultan, who had prohibited drinking, captured the prestigious city of Baghdad and reformed the empire died from cirrhosis of the liver at the age of 27. Since Murat's sons had all died young, his insane brother Ibrahim became the new sultan. The reforms made by Murad has been short-lived and the slow decline of the empire came into motion after the failed siege of Vienna in 1683. Hope you enjoy our first video. We are planning to make more videos on history of Ottoman Empire. Make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon.